Good afternoon. I hope your Tuesday is going well. I'm Julie Broughton. This is Take 6. The time now is 1235. And if you haven't been with us before, we've been doing this for more than a year now. And this is when Monday through Friday at 1235, we get together after our new newscast and talk a little bit more about what we're working on that you'll see coming up in our shows later today. It's nice to be able to have these conversations with our anchors and our reporters and our investigators outside the confines of the time constraints we typically see during a traditional newscast. So today we are talking to New 6 and investigator Eric Sandoval about a story. Eric, I feel like for years we have been talking about flooding in Aster, such a beautiful community, but man, these people, even during, you know, regular rain, it seems like they are dealing with so much flooding. Of course, they've been hit by hurricanes yeah. over the years, and you're giving us the results of a study that was done by the Army Corps of Engineers to see maybe if these folks can get some help. Yeah, absolutely, Julie. You know, you say it's been years. You know, personally, I've been covering Aster since 2017, and that's when Hurricane I Irma uh, hit the area. And I think, you know, you're the meteorologist. Correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong. Irma was like the first yeah. big hurricane we had in a long time here in mm -hmm. central Florida. So, you know, Aster hadn't seen floodwaters for a long time. And just like that, that all changed. And then, you know, we had Ian, Nicole, we had a, a couple others thrown in the mix there. This is what Aster looked like after hurricanes Ian and Nicole just a few years ago. And, you know, this is a small community, but it's a community that loves to live on the mm -hmm. St. John's River. Yeah. They don't want to move anywhere else, you know. You, and it, you've been to Astor, Julie. It's mm -hmm. a beautiful area. Yes. You know, just on a sunny day, you just want to sit there in the restaurant and just enjoy life as it passes you by along with some boats. But, you know, this is what residents have to, you know, basically brace themselves for every time they hear that a hurricane or a major storm is coming. So, uh, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers heard about all this. They saw the media coverage. They jumped in and they wanted to get results on this. So, two years ago, you may remember, we actually followed the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. They were out on a boat in the St. John's River. They were looking at the town of Astor. It was right after Hurricanes Ian and Nicole hit, actually okay. right after Nicole hit, because they wanted to see where the water lines were, um, where the floodwaters had actually gone up to so that that would give them a better gauge of what kind of remedies they could come up with. So two years later, they finally have their official report completed and they came out, came out with seven recommendations mm -hmm. for the town of Astor. So we took these recommendations. We went to Lake County where mm -hmm. Astor uh, sits and we said, okay, Lake County, what are you gonna do? And so at six o'clock, you're gonna see basically what they broke down, what they okay. can do, what they can't do and you know i'm going to give you a little spoiler here some of the recommendations you just read them and you go it's not going to do anything right. and you just wonder why they came up with that as a recommendation again we're going to break down that entire list and you'll see what i'm talking about yeah i know that we don't want to give your story away but what was your reaction when you saw the report and then got to go talk to officials about some of those recommendations well, you know, after covering this for so many years, I was really chomping at the bit. Oh, you know, what yeah. are they going to come up with? What is the panacea for all of this? Um, and I was really, I guess, surprised and I guess a little bit disappointed that they didn't come up with more of a silver bullet solution. Mm. And I think that's what a lot of people were banking on. Yeah. And, you know, I circled back with one of the people. Uh, her name is Brie Garcia. Uh, Bree and her wife have lived there for many, many years, right on the banks of the St. John's. They sent us video right after Hurricane Zia and, and Nicole hit, and the flood water was basically, you know, just covering their entire front yard. And I asked Bree, you know, he, I showed her the list of recommendations. Her street was named in the recommendations. And I showed her what the recommendations were, and she said, you know, it, it looks like our street's going to keep on flooding, but we're not moving. You know, th she was a little disappointed, but at the mm -hmm. same time, she went, meh. Yeah, it's life here. I mean, mm -hmm. we love where we live and this is what we're going to this is what we're going to do. Yeah. And anyone who's been there, we understand why they love living there. It is so beautiful yeah. and so peaceful. It All is. Right. And, you know, it's out in the middle of nowhere. Pardon, yeah. pardon me if I'm offending you. I don't think I am. That That's part of the charm of it. It yeah. is it's smack down in the middle of nowhere. But it's so beautiful. It is. It's just it's beautiful, beautiful country. All right. We'll see your story tonight at six. Absolutely. We'll see you All then, right. Julie. Thanks, Eric.
All right, let's get a check of your forecast. We are already seeing showers and storms starting today. The big story really for the last several days has been the heat, but because we're seeing that early onset of rain today, we won't get quite as hot as we've seen lately. Here's what it looks like for you right now on the radar. We are showing pretty heavy rain through parts of Northern Lake County, back into Marion County, as well as moving to Sumter County and down in Southern Brevard County as well. You are seeing some of those heavier showers. This will be the case through about 7, 8 o'clock today. And along with this, we could see some pockets of heavier rain rain as we're already seeing some gusty winds 40 to 50 miles per hour and we could also be talking about a lot of lightning right now in that last scan we've seen about 47 lightning strikes so our rain chances for today do stay around 70 percent highs will climb into the low 90s for most of us and then we'll trim our chance of rain back as we go into the rest of our work week we'll be with you at four of course talking more about that i'll have your forecast for you coming up at four and five meteorologist jonathan Cagus will be with you for six six thirty and eleven Ginger Bell leads at Gadsden, and I will see you starting at 4. Now, if you have any questions or comments for us here at Take 6, head to clickorlando.com slash take 6. Let us know what's on your mind. Thanks so much for stopping by, and we will see you at 4.